Up until this point, we have done types 1, 2, and 3. Type 1, guys, is mole to mole. That allows us to convert between substances. Only the mole ratio allows us to convert between substances. Then type 2 was a mole to gram, where we added one extra step to our mole ratio to go from moles to grams, where we multiply by the molar mass. Type 3 was a type 2 reversed, where we went from grams to moles. Now type 4 are gram to gram problems. These are the big ones. All right? Type 4, guys, they are going to be a three-step problem. All right, it's a three-step conversion. We need to rewrite our formula, our balanced equation, in here for us to use. So if you remember, guys, that is two moles of aluminum oxide breaking down into four moles of aluminum plus three moles of oxygen. All right, this is the one that we've used all along. We're using it again here. That's what it means when it says using the same reaction in slide three, it says how many grams of aluminum can be produced from 25 grams of aluminum oxide? All right, so if you take a look at your foldable, you will open the entire foldable up, folks. And what we've already made, there is your gram to gram process. All right, it is also written there in your packet. That is what you want to memorize, folks. As we go through some mixed practice here today, okay, you're going to see how this comes in handy when it's mixed together. All right. So how many grams is what we're trying to get to? That's my wanted. My given is right here. So we're going to start with that. 25 grams of aluminum oxide. We know it's going to be a three-step problem. So let's write it out to look like this. This is a long one. Now, folks, if you remember, we have already calculated the molar mass for all of these compounds in our notes from previous pages. So you can just flip back to get those. But let's set our units up first before we worry about any numbers. We always let our units do what? Drive our math. Here we go. Grams of aluminum oxide is what I'm starting with. Do I want to stay with that? No. no. So here's one thing. Before we go into that, like I've mentioned before, guys, with a type 2 or 3, how you know it's going to be a two-step problem with those is because you're going from moles to grams and you're going from substance to substance. How you know this is going to be a three-step problem is because we're going from grams to grams and substance to substance. Substance to substance we know is a one-step problem. That's a mole-to-mole -mole problem. But grams to grams, guys, we can't compare those directly. We have to go from grams back to what first? moles, then we'll switch substances, then we go from moles back to grams. So when you see grams to grams, you know it's a three-step problem. When you see moles to grams, guys, so if you don't see the term mole in there, you know it's going to be a three-step problem. If you see the term mole, if it's mole to gram, it's two steps or gram to mole. If it's mole to mole, it's one. All right, so those are just little tricks that may help you when we get into mixed practice later today. Here we go, grams of aluminum oxide are on the bottom. So that will allow us to go back to what? If we have grams, what will that take us back to up here in the top? What's my unit going to be? Use your road map. Mole. Mole of my given. So these are grams of given. We'll take me back to moles of given, which is aluminum oxide. <coughs> now let's worry about the numbers. So if I take a look at this fraction here, right here. I have moles and I have grams in my fraction. When I have moles and grams, guys, in the same fraction, which one always gets the number one? Mole. Mole will always get the number one when it's moles and grams in the same fraction. One mole of aluminum oxide has how many grams? How do we figure out the number of grams? It's from the molar mass, which is what? We already calculated. Look back in your notes. We calculated it on Friday, guys. 101.96. There it is. Am I done with this problem? No. no. So now I have moles of my given. Once I'm back to moles, guys, that's when I can convert between substances. The mole ratio is the only thing that allows us to convert between substances. 
All right, so here we go. Moles of aluminum oxide will be on the bottom. What am I trying to get to on the top? Eventually, I want to get to grams of aluminum, but first I have to go from moles to moles, so I need moles of aluminum will be on the top. Now, in this fraction, in this fraction right here, I have moles of one substance and moles of the other. What is this fraction, guys? It's my, it's my mole ratio right in here. And like you said, Joe, 4 over 2. Where'd you get those numbers 4 over 2 from? Coefficient. The coefficients, right? Aluminum's coefficient, guys, is a 4. Aluminum oxides is a 2. There's my mole ratio. That's what allows me to go between substances. Notice, this is the point where my substances change. And then the last step, we want to get back to grams. So I can go do the opposite of what I did in the first place. We have... Moles of aluminum down here, grams of aluminum on the top. Which one always gets the number one? Mole, when it's moles and grams in the same fraction. How many grams of aluminum? Where do I get that from? My molar mass is from my periodic table. Aluminum is? Now all I have to do, guys, is do the math. Top times top times top times top. Divide by bottom, divide by bottom, divide by bottom, divide by bottom, guys. That will get you the correct answer every single time. You plug in your calculator. Right? Yes, there's other ways you can plug it into your calculator. This is where it becomes very crucial. If you have it set up correctly like this, don't let the calculator, guys. The calculator should not be where, why you get something wrong. It happens. We all make calculator errors. But take your time when you're punching those in. You know the numbers stick sometimes. Take your time. Can we reduce this at all? Yes. Absolutely, guys. We can reduce the 4 and the 2 to 1 and 2. So really, take all the tops. 50 is 25 times 2 is 50 times this 27. And then divide by that. Go ahead and do the math and tell me what you get. You said 52 point what? I got 13.23. Yeah, 13 sounds is what you should have there. If you didn't get that, double check it. 13 point what? 2 decimals, guys, is a good place to go to unless you're asked for correct sig figs. So as a review, since our semester test will be coming up in February, how many sig figs should we report this to? What do we look back at? The given, guys, your original number. So our original number was 25 grams. How many sig figs is in 25? Two. So how many should we report this to if we're going to correct sig figs? Two. What would it be reported to correct sig figs? It would just be 13 grams of aluminum. If we were asked, guys, if you're not asked for correct sig figs, two decimal places is a good rule of thumb. So let me ask this. Here is the gram to gram, guys, the big one, all right? the one that we've been building up to all year long, the math. Is the math anything new to us? No, guys. We've taken all of these individual pieces. If I were to cover up these last two fractions, going between grams and moles, that's from unit six. Over here, these last two fractions, guys, that's unit six. This one in here, mole ratio, that's the new piece. All of it together is what makes this more challenging. What you've got to remember to do is you've got to have your units. Units become crucial here. Not only just moles and grams, okay, but the substances, because we're going between substances. You've got to have your units. If you have been good all year long about writing all your units down, this unit, guys, unit eight straight down, she's going to be super easy. It's not going to be that bad. But if you have struggled with units all year long, if you haven't done that, it will be a challenge for you. Questions about this problem? I believe you guys have an example problem there in your notes. I want you guys to do that example problem on your own. All right, here we go. I'm going to work this one out, guys. You will have on your quiz tomorrow all four types mixed together. So what we're going to do after this problem is I'm going to give you guys a worksheet. You're going to start working on that all right, as part of your homework. Um, but I'm going to teach you guys how to use the road map. It's going to help make it a lot easier for you. So here we go. This is Graham's to grams, so we know it's going to be a th three-step problem. 
Start by writing down what you have. 25 grams of aluminum. Kind of doing the opposite of what we just did in the last one. So 26.98 grams of aluminum is our molar mass. That lets us go back to moles of aluminum. All right. Then we need our mole ratio. Moles of aluminum on the bottom. Moles of our wanted, which is aluminum oxide on the top. We get that from our equation, folks. Again, this is our um, balanced equation, the decomposition of aluminum oxide into aluminum and oxygen. Okay. So aluminum oxide has got a 2. That's the coefficient out in front. Aluminum has a 4. All right, moving along. 1 mole of aluminum oxide on the bottom. We have, what was the, let's see back here, 101.96. 101.96 grams of aluminum oxide. We can reduce this down, folks. You don't have to reduce it down if you don't want to. It's totally up to you. Because um, if you plug in your calculator, it's going to take care of it for you anyway. So when you plug all of that in, top times top times top times top, divide by bottom, divide by bottom, divide by bottom, divide by bottom, guys, what do you get for a final answer? Should not be that. Should be something like what? Yeah. 47.24 grams of aluminum oxide. If I was reporting this correct, sig figs. If I was reporting this, folks, to correct sig figs, how many significant figures would I report this to? Two, Two which would be 47. Give me a thumbs up, folks, if you got that completely right. Kind of side if you're on the right track. All right, but you weren't quite there. And thumbs down if you have absolutely no idea what's going on. Okay, again, that's why, guys, you've got to show your work as much as possible because it's very easy to make a simple calculator error. If you have it all set up perfectly, you're going to get pretty much all the credit. Questions?